Hello and welcome back to episode 41 of Infrared Image Editing here with Eric Kems. Today I want to talk about whether it is useful to do a channel swap or not. Uh, I will demonstrate it here with a picture of a lake and uh, this lake is in Sweden. It was uh, taken, the picture was taken with a Fujifilm X-T3 and a 630 nanometer infrared filter. The image is quite dark, that's because, well, it was uh, yeah, taken in a dark environment and I haven't paid uh, so much attention on the exposure. Um, it was already a two minute exposure uh, at an uh, aperture of f8 and um, the lens that was used was the Fujifilm 50mm f2.8. But we can yeah, deal with the brightness of the image without any hassle and yeah, I can show you how we can make a really nice um, color image out of this right after the intro. So let's just uh, jump into the dark room. As you can see, this is the uh, rendering of the uh, Darktable app. Uh, it's really dark and uh, first thing I will scroll on the histogram here to make it a little bit brighter, just that we can uh, see what we are talking about. You can see that we have a big tree here on the right side and some birches here in the background, all in front of this uh, yeah, foliage of the forest. And the main thing is that you have uh, here a rock on the bottom right side of the image and uh, on the bottom uh, third there is yeah, more or less a line, a mirror line of symmetry because we have the reflections of all this uh, stuff here in the surface of the lake and this gives uh, yeah, a special something to this image. Also we have a good uh, reflection because it was taken with such a long exposure time of two minutes. Um, yeah, but let's just deal with the editing of the image. We jump to our quick axis panel here on the left. Um, I will keep white balance just for uh, uh, later. And we start with yeah, activating our profile denoise. Also a lens correction, haze removal. And we can max out uh, global saturation, global chroma and global vibrance. Also adding local contrast with the default value is a good idea. Now you see that we have a really yeah, magenta tint uh, image. This is normal because um, yeah, when you shoot Fuji, you know that the X-Trans uh, sensors are not good in white balancing uh, infrared images. So you always uh, have this kind of magenta tint in your images when you do the white balance with the uh, camera. But uh, as we are shooting with RAW, this is not a problem. Um, I will open the uh, full featured uh, white balance tab here on the, on the module side. And yeah, you can see this, um, this icon here, the eyedropper icon. And when I click it, um, Darktable makes a yeah, frame, nearly 89% of the whole image and measures the best uh, white balance that it can take. Uh, when we look at this image, um, the best point to measure the white balance is here the, um, the birch, because it's uh, yeah, supposed to be the, the white and neutral point in the image. But uh, I personally, um, I don't like it that much. Uh, let's do it. I just click on it and you see that now the birch here is, um, is right. And because of that, the whole image has to be cooled down. And you see that uh, also the, the rock here on, on, the, um, on the bottom right side of the image is quite um, dark and um, no, not dark, it's blue. And uh, yeah, the overall tint in the image is uh, very blue and very cool. And I personally don't like it that much. And this is maybe an example uh, for when to not use and not rely on the outer white balance. We can compare this. I make just a snapshot and then I um, yeah, use the whole image for white balancing again. Okay, just like that. And as you can see, um, yeah, this is quite a dramatic, uh, dramatic uh, difference between these two. And for my taste, this is way too blue. I, I don't like it. And I really like that these uh, birches here um, are a little bit brownish and they pop out of the uh, foliage background. And also uh, I want to have this brown uh, rock here on the uh, right side 
I uh, really want it to pop. And because of that, I will leave the um, white balance as uh, measured for the whole image. And now uh, when hovering the mouse over the, um, over the slider here of the temperature, we can scroll down and manipulate, uh, fine tune more or less, uh, the white balance and make it just a little bit cooler. So we can have more or less um, a good middle way between these extreme values. And by doing this, uh, you can see we still have brown, um, brown, um, brown rocks and brown birches, but um, yeah, not a total blue tint. I can just maybe make this back on. And you can see, um, yeah, it's it's somewhere in between, and I really like this more. And yeah, it's my preference for this uh, kind of motif. So next of all, I will try to deal uh, with the contrast a little bit more. I can use the local contrast and um, yeah, just sum up the detail slider. Maybe around 150 is a good idea. And you can see that uh, yeah, the local contrast uh, is a good idea for this kind of images where you have a lot of fine details and structures. When I turn it off, it's a yeah, more or less flat image. And now uh, maybe give an attention, uh, an eye here on this area where the birches and, and the, the leaves are. When I turn it on, it really pops out and gives a lot of good and nice contrast and sharpness, perceived sharpness to the image. Um, it's always a good idea to add local contrast to your infrared uh, photography. So another trick that I want to try is uh, I want to brighten up the colors. And I can do this by using the color balance RGB module here at the bottom. You find the perceptual brilliance uh, grid, uh, grading uh, area. Um, you can use the global uh, brilliance, make it all to the right. And now you see that uh, yeah, the colors become more, um, more bright. They shine more, but you also have uh, problems here in the highlights, for example here, that they overexpose. And so I will use the highlight slider just uh, enough to bring, um, bring the highlights back here in this area. Now you see that we are uh, in the range again and there's nothing overexposing, um, but we have, um, yeah, Maybe just get a step back. You see it's a lot more dull and yeah, by doing this we get more more vibrance in our colors and that's something that I really want. So normally when you do infrared photography you um, end up using the uh, channel swap and uh, I want to yeah maybe show you why I don't want to do this uh, in, in this image. So here's the color calibration module and uh, when I activate it I can grab it and pull it up here in the right position. Now I can activate the swap R and B preset and you see that we have a perfect uh, yeah, color swap, channel swap as we are used to. Mm. And let me just make a snapshot. So we have these two um, yeah, variants. You see that with the color swap you get uh, golden yellow leaves that you are used to and normally you prefer. But uh, one uh, specialty here in this image is that there is um, yeah, no uh, sky visible. And because of that, we don't have any reference for, for color trueness, more or less. And I find often that uh, images without uh, any sky don't need um, um, a channel swap. And I most often yeah, tend to not do it in these images because I like the colors that come out uh, out of it. Don't get me wrong, the uh, color here of the, um, of the foliage, the yellow, is, is good. I, I like the color tone. It's okay. But what I don't like are the birches. They get like this bluish color shine. And also here the stone on the bottom right gets this uh, bluish uh, color. And I, from personally, I really want to have these, um, these elements to be like brown. The brown uh, ground, uh, rockish um, part here has to be brown. And I also prefer the birches to be brown uh, rather than like blue. And uh, it's totally 100% a personal opinion. But uh, the point I want to make is that in case you don't have any sky in your image, just try uh, and test it what uh, version you like more. You don't need to always do a colors a channel swap. And for me, it's definitely the non-swapped uh, version with the blue foliage that I like more and I want to stick uh, with this image uh, for a non-channel um, non swapped version. So 
the image is uh, not ready yet. You could uh, maybe think it if you are here in the first place, but if you have looked up another video of mine, you know that I always use an RGB curve to just brighten up the mid-tones and bring some more life and lightness here into the image. You can see. Um, sorry, I'm. you can't argue with me. It's just... Um, it's just me, I, I like it and... Okay, this now is the final image. You see, um, yeah, the end result. I like it this way, this color rendition. Uh, I know it's 100% uh, up to you and to your taste, but yeah, just keep in mind, you don't need to do a channel swap every time in, in every image. Yes, but I'm interested, which version do you prefer? Do you prefer this blue version without color swap or a yellow uh, version with the color swap? Just drop me some comments down below and let me know what yeah, kind of editing you like more. So that's it for today. I hope you have learned something new and found some useful tricks for your next infrared editing. If there are any questions, you can yeah, write me a mail or uh, leave me a comment. I'm happy to answer. And we will see us here in about one month. Um, as I told in the last newsletter, I'm trying to yeah, put out a one image editing video every month. So uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. And uh, by the way, if you are not uh, subscribed yet to the newsletter, you can head over to irrecamps.de and uh, sign up there for free. Okay, that's it. Have fun with your camera. And uh, I wish you good light and see you next time. Bye.